Amy, Director of Sales and Special Events here at the Ospreys at Belmont Bay. Today I want to come to you with the new edition of The Real Wedding Talk right here on our comfy couch. And I want to talk to you about things to do in order to be the best wedding guest possible. Actually, maybe it's more like things you should not do. Make sure you like and subscribe our channel. Check out our blog on ospreysgolf.com for more pro tips on how brides and grooms can circumvent these issues we are about to discuss. Tip number one, do not invite guests that are not listed on your invitation. For example, if your invitation comes and it says Mr. and Mrs. Love, it literally means just Mr. and Mrs. Love. It does not mean Mr. and Mrs. Love plus their six children. Number two, RSVP, period. Do not show up if you didn't. This is not a birthday party. It's not a cookout where people come and go at their leisure. Your bride and groom have had to turn in their numbers to the catering and the event staff. And if you have not RSVP'd, you really will not be counted on and no one will just assume that you're coming. Number three, arrive on time. Please, please, please do not arrive 45 minutes early, ask the bartender for a drink, be upset when she declines, and be in the way of the event team as they're staging the event. Also, please never just pull up a seat at a table in the ballroom or anywhere else and put water rings on the linens or maybe rearrange the decor. It will not be appreciated. We suggest guests arriving no more than 15 minutes prior to the start time. This will give you ample time to park and find a seat. Now on the flip side, don't be late. It's a huge distraction given how intimate weddings are. You don't want all, all eyes to be on you and not the happy couple. Number four, please keep your opinions to yourself. <laughs> your best friend's wedding is not the time to begin your career in wedding reviews. Whether you love or hate everything about their day is not important. All of the time, effort, emotions, and money that they've spent going into planning their wedding day, it would be shameful to bring any amount of negative attention to their wedding. Number five, respect the professionals and their workspace. One of the most common annoyances that I and my fellow directors have witnessed are iPhone photographers. We realize that everyone's an iPhone photographer in their spare time, but they're actually wedding professionals that make a living doing this. These people have actually been paid by the couple to be present and they are responsible, responsible for getting these shots. They will actually have to sit before the bride and groom after the wedding and explain why they were unable to get the shots or show an unhappy bride and groom a sea of iPhone cameras and stretched out arms with twisted bodies because everybody wants to get that perfect shot of the bride and groom. Please, please, please just stay out of their way. Number six, social media with caution. If the couple has been specific and they have asked you to please turn off your phones and be present during their wedding, there's a good chance that they may not want their wedding photos posted online without their approval. Many couples prefer to wait for their professional photos before they post online, while others opt for hashtag frames at their wedding encouraging the tag. Follow the couple's lead and make sure you aren't the, the first to post their intimate day. Number seven, be aware of your alcohol consumption. Ladies, I know that you have worked out and planned to wear that little black dress for months. However, we're going to need you to eat more than three pieces of asparagus to match your five cocktails. No one likes to be the girl throwing up in the sink in the bathroom at the end of the night or her fiance that has also had a liquid dinner and got carried away with his college roomies. Number eight, please don't talk through the special dances. It's really rude. More often than not, couples are intimidated by their special dances and they don't want to be the center of attention. They're intimate and you should feel honored to bear witness. Please respect their time. Number nine, we love a good dance party and it is your job as a wedding guest to make sure the reception is fun. Dance your heart out, cut loose, wobble your tail off. Please do not twerk on the dance floor. Number 10, when the party's over, 
go home. <laughs> make sure you have your personal belongings with you and make a swift exit. Event staff are not able to effectively and responsibly close up the venue until it's empty and secured. Wedding days are really long days for vendors and couples. It's often a 10 plus hour work day and most people are gonna be super excited to get off their feet at the end of the night and with any luck, they'll happily do it all again the next day. Weddings bring out all the things in all the people all the time. And we're here for all of that and we want it to be the best day ever. Our couples are our main priority, but you as guests are an extension of them and we care about you too. We're thrilled to have you and hope that you come back from time to time. We're writing love stories together, filling in the blanks as the day unfolds. Let's all be the best, supportive, flattered to bear witness, love exuding guests our mutual people in this world have ever seen. You do your part and we got the rest. And when you don't, we'll be there for that too. Thanks so much for joining us this week. For more pro tips on how to be the best wedding guest ever, please visit our blog at ospreysgolf.com for more information. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks so much. Bye. Number four. Bye. <laughs> Did I forget to say? Number five. <laughs> okay. About 10 things you can do to be the West get the best. Mm. The West. The West. <laughs>